Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be testing what's the best way to print your black and white photos and photo books. We're going to look at Silver Halide, HP Indigo, Inkjet and Dye Sublimation printers. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, I have a new Patreon page now if you want to show your support for this channel in return for cool rewards. One of the most common questions I get asked on a daily basis is what's the best company to choose for printing black and white photos, how to print your black and white photos. This is definitely not a one word answer so I decided to conduct a test and tell you all about the results. There are so many print methods that it would be impossible to test them all. However, 99% of all photo books on the market are going to be printed either on Silver Halide, HP Indigo or Inkjet printers. For this reason, I selected a bunch of photos and I printed the same photos on three different printers. And these are the books that I got. So I've got an Indigo test book, I've got an Inkjet test book, and I also have a Silver Halide test book. I also did a test on small prints like these ones because I really wanted to see how they compare. Now, I didn't do a test on art prints and, you know, very big high end gallery prints because the print methods, media and inks available for those prints are so varied that it would be impossible for me to cover them and also they are not really accessible for the general public. But the ones I tested here are going to be Silver Halide, Offset and Dye Sublimation, so the most common versions that you can find in supermarkets, drugstores and small photoshops. Just a couple of disclaimers before we get into it. First of all, this is not an ad and it was not sponsored by any company. This is a printer test, it's not a company test. So I'm going to tell you which photo and book was printed on what printer, but I'm not going to tell you which company printed them. And lastly, I really struggled to capture the nuances and differences in quality and color on this video camera and on taking pictures. So I came to the conclusion that the easiest way to show that is to scan all the photo books and pictures. Before we get into the tests, there are a few things you need to understand about black and white photography. If you get a photo book or a print and you're not really happy with the quality, you're probably gonna say it's a bad printer. But there's so much more to that. And there are so many things that can go wrong in every stage of the print method and some of them could be easily fixed by you. So I wanna take you through the stages of a photo from the moment it's being taken all the way when you get them printed in your hands in a photo book or on a print and to see what can go wrong at each stage. So the first thing to think about is how you take your pictures. If you take your photos in color, then you will need to turn them black and white. It seems easy, but you'd be surprised how complicated it can be. First of all, there are many ways of turning a photo into black and white. You can use a black and white filter, you can desaturate it, you can change the mode to grayscale, you can make it desaturated in CMYK. All of these ways of making a photo black and white are going to be slightly different, and some printers are not going to be interpret them the same way, so there's going to be a big difference between the end result. Many companies offer ICC profiles, which are basically lookup tables that try to mimic how the print is going to look when you get it in your hand. Now, these are very handy, but even with the most calibrated displays and monitors, there could be a, a considerable mismatch between what you see on your screen and what you see when you get the physical product into your hands. Also, if you want to use ICC profiles, you need quite a high-end software to use them, like uh, Photoshop or Lightroom, which can be expensive. And the most popular photo book companies like Mixbook and Shutterfly don't offer any ICC profiles for you to check them. So in these cases, you can either go by research, looking up other people's experiences, like what I'm saying now, or you can test it yourself. The second thing you want to worry about is the printers and print settings. Now, this is not something that you can change, it's up to the company. Each printer uses a different technology. For example, Silver Halide uses RGB light to make your photos, inkjet printers and the offset printers use CMYK colors. Printers these days are optimized to print in color because all of our pictures are in color. So even if you print a black and white photo, it's going to be made up of colors. Photo book companies that print thousands of photo books and automated processes will not have the capacity to look through every single job 
and change the setting. If default settings are well calibrated, you're lucky and you're going to get a good print, but if some settings favor certain colors more than others, you're going to get black and white prints with certain tints on them, like a cold, uh, bluish tint or a greenish tint, pinkish. And these are the color hues and uh, tints that I want to talk about and show you in these books. Number three is the media used. So when we look at paper, especially white paper in isolation, we might think that, okay, it's just white. But just as there are 50 shades of gray, there are also many, many shades of white. If you have a creamish white paper and you put it next to a brilliant white or a bluish, coolish white paper, you'll instantly see the difference in the tone of the white paper. And this tinting from the white paper is going to transfer onto your print. You can research the media that your company is using to eliminate this problem. If they use a really warmish uh, paper stock, then you might be able to compensate for it by making your pictures, your black and white photos slightly cooler. However, most companies should have profiles set up to the media type. And finally, number four, where are you looking at your photos? It sounds silly, but our eyes, of course, use light to see color. So the type of light under which you're looking at your pictures is going to influence the perception of color. If you're looking at your pictures under warm light, they're going to seem warmer. If you look at your pictures under very cold light, it's going to seem colder. Also, many papers use OBAs, which are optical brightening agents. And these are basically chemicals which absorb UV light and re-emit it in the blue spectrum to try to compensate for the yellow nature of paper. This makes papers look much brighter in daylight, but you don't get the same effect on the warmer light or incandescent light. Another phenomenon that can happen is metamerism. It happens when black, black is made up of several colors and the colors react differently to different wavelengths of light. So this is very common in silver halide prints where if you look at them on the daylight, they look very nice and grayscale, quite neutral. But if you look at them under tungsten light, they're going to look a lot more greenish. So what are we going to test? I picked two photos. One of them is a landscape, which has a very balanced dynamic range. And the other one is a portrait photo, which has quite strong contrast in it. Both of these pictures were obviously taken in color and I turned them black and white in a variety of ways. Finally, I also used the gray chart just to see the shades and the dynamic range and I created some color testing as well, but that's going to come in a different video. So let me give you a quick look into what we're dealing with. So in every book, I have the same pages. The first page is this one here where you see eight different versions of um, this photo, two color and six black and white. And starting on this side, we've got RGB black and white. I've got grayscale, desaturated, desaturated in CMYK, the iPhone filter and CMYK from black and white and CMYK and RGB in uh, color. It's difficult to see what I'm doing when the TV is there. So that's the first page. And on the second page, I've got this exact same for the uh, portrait shots. And then I've got some bigger photos for the um, CMYK on black and white. Same for that. And then I also have the color versions and I have the gray chart on this side and I have the RGB and the CMYK chart on the other side. So number one thing I want to test is the coloring and the tinting, whether it's truly black and white, neutral, greenish, pinkish, and so on. This one was probably the hardest thing to judge. I looked at these photos in daylight, in um, LED light, under incandescent light, everywhere. And honestly, in every single scenario, I felt like my eyes are tricking me because if I see just one book in isolation, I don't really notice the tinting, but if I put them next to each other, it's a lot more obvious. All three photo books have a tint and you're going to see it on the screen right now. I'm going to put two um, montages of the scanned images. The silver halide, has kind of a bluish greenish tint, but it's very subtle. The inkjet was really warm. The indigo was on the cold side, so it's a lot more bluish than the other two. Now it's important to note that the silver halide has a subtle bluish tint in the white paper. The inkjet was printed on warmer paper and the indigo was the most neutral white paper. And despite this, 
the results were quite different. So I'm gonna to try to put the three pictures next to each other just so you can see it in the book as well. So I'm not sure how well you're gonna see it on the camera here, but that's why I put those photos up there. The smallest one on that side is the silver halide, which you can see is subtle greenish bluish tint. The middle one is the HP Indigo, which is a lot colder. And this one here is the inkjet printer which is a lot warmer. There's no right or wrong here really, it's extremely difficult to get perfectly black and white photos, but I would say go with your taste. So if the inkjet is a little bit warmer and you do prefer warmer tones in your black and white pictures, then by no means go for it despite it not being completely neutral. If you want to go for the one which has the least tinting, I would pick the server highlight in this case. Now, if we look at the modes where how the pictures were saved, so I've got six different ways that I saved these photos. The server highlight did the best. So the server highlight was fairly consistent in all six modes, but the inkjet and the indigo printer was a lot less consistent throughout the different modes of saving. So my advice here would be whatever printer you use, the best results seem to be when I turn my pictures black and white and save them in RGB mode. The second thing I was looking at is sharpness, detail and resolution. This is obviously very important, not just the tinting and colouring, we want to see great detail and sharpness. The silver halide and the inkjet print did really well, both were really detailed, very smooth. I would say the inkjet had probably a little bit more detail, which is expected especially from the Canon Dream Labo, but at the same time the silver halide looked a little bit sharper and crisper. That could be due to a sharpening feature before printing on the company side. So both of these were really detailed and nice and crisp. The HP Indigo obviously falls short because it is a half tone print method and the dots are really visible. So due to that, you lose some detail. The inkjet is half tone as well, but because the new inkjet printers have so fine print heads, it almost looks like continuous tone, just like Silver Halide. The third thing I was looking at is dynamic range, because again, this is one of the most important qualities of a print. In this category, without any doubt, Silver Halide was the big winner. The Indigo printer is really bad when it comes to dynamic range. The shadows are mostly lost. You see very bright highlights and very dark shadows and not a huge amount in between. The Canon Dream Labo is supposed to be very good at maintaining dynamic range. However, most of these photos in the Canon book were quite dark, darker than I expected them to be. Again, that could be a setting at the company's side, but I have to go with what I see here. So the silver highlight was the best. Beautiful dynamic range, so much detail retained in the shadows as well. You can see on the close-up here, if you look at the jacket or the shadow on the face, you can see a lot of detail. Now let's have a look at these small prints as well. So the story here is a little bit different. I've got the silver halide, I've got the offset, which is the HP Indigo, and I also have a dye sublimation, which is not something that you would ever find in photo books, but it's very common in kiosks. Like if you go to supermarkets, Asda, Walmart, you will find a lot of dye sublimation photo prints because it's very cheap and it's very fast and efficient. So when it comes to these three print methods, the silver halide was again the closest to the original, very very subtle tinting. The offset printer was a lot warmer and the dye sublimation was a lot colder. The second thing we're looking at detail, the silver halide was nicely detailed and sharp. The dye sublimation is a little bit blurred and washed out, it's not as crisp as the silver halide and the offset printer again because it's a half tone print method you will see a lot of dots small tiny dots in the print so it's not going to be as detailed as the silver halide so silver halide wins again the last is dynamic range again no doubt here silver halide is the best in all three categories when it comes to the small prints so what's the final verdict so the final verdict is that it's almost impossible to create a perfect black and white photo book prints are easier if you use a black and white silver halide dark room you can get true black and white but if you use c prints which are using three colors then it's going to be almost impossible to get a perfectly black and white print and even if it's really close to looking black and white the perception of color is going to change depending on where you're looking at your pictures so instead of aiming for a perfect black and white print, try to aim for something that really matches your taste. 
So if you like your portrait black and white photos to have a slight warmish tint, then try to go for a company which is going to print black and white with a warmer tone. If you're looking for something really neutral and you think you did the best you can on your side and your photo book comes back or your prints and they look really greenish or really pinkish, you have to contact the company because if you did the best you can, something has to be on their end. And the slight subtle tint is okay because it's very difficult to get that black and white, neutral black and white. But if you get strong hues and strong tinting on your photos, make sure to contact the company. If it's someone like Shutterfly or Mixbook, they will offer you a reprint, but don't expect them to start wiggling and twiddling with the settings to make your pictures perfectly black and white. However, if you have your photo books done by more pro companies like Sal Digital, uh, Printique in the States, Zeno or Pixmig, these companies cater for wedding photographers and more professional photographers. So it's more likely that they're going to take the time to make sure that you're really happy with the results and they are happy to tweak the settings for optimal results. Looking at the overall quality, color, dynamic range and detail, I would pick Silver Highlight here as my favorite, both with the small prints and the photo books because it was the least tinted, it had the best dynamic range and it was very detailed and sharp. The Canon Dream Labo was almost there, but because the book looked a lot darker than what I expected it to be, I couldn't pick it as my favorite one. The inkjet printers are fairly new in the photo book world, so sometimes if they have the right settings, they can even outperform Silver Halide. Sometimes they just lag slightly behind, so it really depends on the company that you choose. But inkjet and Silver Halide, both of them are really good with color dynamic range, detail and sharpness. The HP Indigo printers are really good if you want to make a big run like 100, 200 books or something that doesn't really matter, like, you know, quick photos from a weekend but they were not invented to substitute for professional uh, photo printing and art photos. When it comes to sharpness and dynamic range, they are inferior to inkjet and silver halide. And regarding these small prints, as I said, silver halide was my favorite, but that doesn't mean that you have to always go for silver halide. If quality is your number one priority, then by all means go for silver halide with the small prints. But if you just, you know, have to print out a photo to put into a birthday card, or if you want to print out photos for your kids, a school project, then there's no need to try to look for a silver halide printer. You can just go into the first supermarket, get them printed on any instant print uh, service. Don't forget that the final result of these black and white prints is going to depend on the quality of your photos, how you save them and how well the printers are calibrated by your chosen company. The tint may vary, but the sharpness and dynamic range is going to be fairly consistent for all the prints coming from the same technology. So if you choose a silver halide book for your black and white photos, you might get a slightly different tint than what I was getting, but the dynamic range and the sharpness will be the same as what I have in my books. So that was my rather long testing of black and white photos. I hope this was helpful to you. If you're looking for the most recent voucher codes for uh, print companies, go to my blog, thephotobookguru.com slash deals for the latest coupons and voucher codes. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, subscribe for more.